player rankings are subjective, but also crucial if NBA fans are going to have the proper dialogue on social media. On Twitter mostly, but really every social media platform, you have your Harden, Durant, slash Kawhi stands, your Curry diehards, your strictly Skip Bayless watching casuals, and of course, your bronze sexuals. All of those groups will tell you their favorite player is the best in the league, and if you disagree with that, their response goes a little something like, What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Having said that, in my opinion, these are the top 10 NBA players after the 2021 finals. Again, in my opinion. The honorable mentions for this list are Chris Paul, Jason Tatum, Devin Booker, Jimmy Butler, Anthony Davis, and the most highly considered player for the top 10 is Donovan Mitchell. D. Mitch is a proven playoff performer, so you could argue he should be on this list. The Spide is definitely number 11. The man's explosiveness plus improving jump shot could make him a top five player in a year's time. Number 10, Joel Embiid. If Ben Simmons played half decent, maybe Chuck would have given the 76ers a guarantee. <laughs> because with a top-notch number one option, JoJo, Philly could have gone the distance this year. With players like Seth Curry and Tobias Harris averaging 20 points, along with the rim protection of Dwight Howard to back up Joel, I like the Sixers team this year. Embiid was an MVP candidate which got disrupted by a meniscus tear, which he went on to incredibly play through in the postseason. Joel's postseason numbers were still damn good despite that injury, but the Sixers lost in seven in the second round. The exact same thing happened to them in 2019, so Joel has to have more playoff success for him to rank higher. Number nine, Damian Lillard. Dames also failed to get his team over the top in the playoffs, but based off the fact that he's one of the top players at the deepest position in basketball, gives him the slight edge over Embiid. Also, we can't forget about Dame time. Portland's franchise player has been the clutchest player in the league for a while now. He's on the trading block after saying in an interview that he's, quote, done everything in Portland, so it'll be interesting to see if Dame's in a new jersey by the start of the season. Number eight, James Harden. The Beard's hamstring injury kept him out for the majority of the 2021 season in playoffs, but he did return for the last few games of the Nets series against the Bucks. However, Harden was clearly impacted by a serious hamstring injury and looked like a shell of himself. With his passing combined with the generationally great shot creating, Harden would usually be in the top five, but after a rocky exit from the Houston Rockets and an injury-plagued campaign, the number eight ranking felt like the right spot for the former MVP. Number seven, Luka Doncic. Embiid has Harris and Curry next to him. Lillard has another all-star caliber player next to him. It's CJ McCollum. Luka has Porzingis and Tim Hardaway Jr. That's about it. Still, Luka got the Mavericks one win away from upsetting Paul George and Kawhi Leonard and moving on to the second round. In that seven game series versus LA, Doncic passed Kareem and LeBron for the most playoff triple doubles before the age of 23. The Slovenian sensation has earned the reputation of a superstar and a top 10 player. Now all Doncic needs is some talent around him so he can move up the ranks. Number six, Nikola Jokic. Three letters describe why the Joker is one of the best players in the league, MVP. Nikola Jokic is only 26, but he's already the greatest passing center of all time, the face of the Denver Nuggets franchise, and of course, the NBA's biggest jokester. He's longer than you. He's well, um, he's long, so um, I'm not gonna see. <laughs> so close. <laughs> Number five, Kawhi Leonard. If Kawhi hadn't have gotten hurt and kept the LA Clippers in the dark about whether or not he was returning, then he would have ranked higher than number five. After the NBA universe, including his teammates, had no idea about his playing status on a game-to-game -game basis, it turned out Leonard had a partially torn ACL. At full strength, we know this man's easily the best two-way player in basketball, but Questions about his mentality and commitment continue to be an issue. The fun guy's legacy is right next to LeBron, Durant, and Curry's all time, but don't forget this list takes into account the here and now. Number four, Stephen Curry. 
with the second Splash Brother back next to him to start the 2022 season, the Warriors should be able to make a deep playoff run again. But this past season from Curry was just so inspirational, bro. He was an MVP candidate, breaking the record for the most games with 10 plus threes in a season with six such games. He also broke the record for the most threes per game on average with 5.2. Curry's offense is better than 90% of this list, but it's his lack of defensive value that ranks him lower than these next three players. But who knows where he'll rank next year. With how much success Golden State could have, we could see Curry back at number one or two by the end of the 2022 finals. Number three, LeBron James. Obviously, he's got the greatest legacy of anyone in the league. The man's a four-time champion and four-time finals MVP, plus he went to eight straight finals last decade. But again, this ranking's based off current value, which LeBron certainly still has a lot of, considering he's ranked ahead of Steph and Kawhi. You could argue that after LeBron won 2020's title and had the shortest offseason to recover for the 2021 season, that he wore down in the playoffs this year because of that lack of rest. But I just think LeBron's finally starting to see father time take a toll on his production. LeBron's turning 37 in December, but he'll have a full offseason to recover in the cryo chamber, so look for him to reclaim his spot as the undisputed number one player in basketball. There's still a solid argument that he still is. Having said that, number two, Giannis Adetokounmpo. 50 points is the most any player in league history has scored in a finals closeout game. Not only did the Greek freak hit a clutch 17 for 19 from the line and 16 of 25 from the floor in game six versus Phoenix, but it was the beastly five blocks that he racked up which proved his dominance. Like LeBron, Giannis is debatably number one on this list because we've simply never seen an NBA Finals performance like his. The man's the greatest slasher of this generation, one of the best vocal leaders in the game, and he's also a dominant post-up player. But even Giannis would tell you that number one is Kevin Durant. I, you know, I said a couple of days ago he's the best player in the world, he's still the best player in the world, and uh, we know coming into this series that we have to do it as a team. There's a reason why Nets coach Steve Nash became a meme for hugging Durant. KD laid everything out on the line and more in the 2021 playoffs. Kyrie was out, Harden was completely injured, yet the Nets got one overtime period away, one shot away from beating the eventual championship winning Milwaukee Bucks. The Slim Reaper played in all 53 minutes of Game 7 against Milwaukee, which was the most minutes in a Game 7 of all time throughout the NBA's 75-year history, but Durant still had the energy to hit this miraculous shot, which sent Game 7 to OT. Here is Durant moving on Tucker. He turns, he shoots, yes! Call Easy Money Sniper a snake for ring chasing all you want, but that doesn't change the fact that he's the most gifted player in the game. His seven foot frame, brilliant ball handling, and once in a lifetime shot making make the best player in basketball, but that's just my take. Let me know yours in the comments section. Leave a like to help this video reach more people, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This was D Flow. Have a great one, and I'll see you next video.